Mars is covered in sand dunes, or at least it looks that way from orbit, but a rover's perspective reveals something even more exotic. Mars is also covered in sand ripples, covered in armor, and Perseverance has scuffed one on this episode of Mars Guy. Mars qualifies as a dune planet. It has lots of huge and even beautiful dunes, despite an atmosphere with less than 1% the pressure of Earth's atmosphere. And if you think that defies physics, realize that the atmospheric pressure at the surface of Mars is equivalent to about 100,000 feet above Earth's surface in its stratosphere. That's where lighter-than-air balloons still have enough air to be lighter than, and enough wind to drive them at speeds of 10 miles per hour or more. So there's plenty of air on Mars to make sand dunes. But they're only one kind of wind-created landform. Ripples are another, and Perseverance has been driving between and over them for months now, including getting hung up on one, as I presented in episode 74. Ripples, unlike dunes, are created when wind-driven sand grains bounce along the surface, splashing other grains as they go. Those splashed grains, which can be bigger than the sand grains, don't move very far, sometimes just creeping along the surface. This action results in a pile of grains that form what's known as an impact ripple. Recently, Perseverance was taking core samples from a location known as Enchanted Lake, surrounded by ripples. Conveniently, in reach of the robotic arm was a small ripple, so Perseverance deployed the Watson camera to take a look. Here's Mars Guy for scale. It revealed a surface of notably varied grains, referred to as poorly sorted. Ripples composed of such poorly sorted grains are called mega ripples, which confusingly has nothing to do with their size. But you won't see a surface like this on a sand dune. Not only is there a range of sizes, but there's also a range of color and angularity, from well-rounded to very angular, which says something about how far the grains were transported. Although there's a plan to collect regolith, basically Martian soil, this pile of sand and pebbles may be too thin for the special regolith drill bit needed to collect it. So better to go for a more mega ripple. Conveniently, there are examples nearby, like this one, which Perseverance trundled off to investigate. And this investigation included a move called a wheel scuff, which was first done with the Spirit rover nearly 20 years ago on a mega ripple in Gusev Crater. Here's the sequence as performed by Perseverance. Drive onto the ripple, turn the wheel and pivot the rover, rotate the wheel about a quarter turn backwards, and then back away. The result is a divot that provides a shallow cross-section into the ripple for the instruments to inspect. The view from Watson is spectacular. Never has a rover documented a collection of grains like this, which are dominated by coarse, angular, light-toned rock fragments probably eroded from nearby mudstone outcrops. And thanks to the wheel scuff, we can see that those grains are concentrated in a surface layer with the interior dominated by fine sand grains. This arrangement is described as armoring, one of the hallmarks of mega ripples and first observed on Mars with spirit. Armored ripples are relatively stable compared to dunes, so once formed, they're hard to move. That's why dunes on Mars are seen to march right over them. And that's why now that you know about mega ripples, you won't call them dunes.